Many snakes in captivity, everybody, are known to be pretty calm and actually quite sociable and aim, keep, capable of being handled. But there are a few in captivity, everybody, that really uh, don't really do so well of being handled and being socialized. So I'm going to go over with a few snakes that are actually not quite as friendly and uh, not be, being able to be held as much. Before we get into today's video, everybody, I just want to remind every single one of you that is watching this, I will be at the Tinley Park Reptile Show next weekend, everybody, both Saturday and Sunday. I'll be there throughout most of the day on Saturday, everyone, from the morning until the late afternoon, and then Sunday, I'll be there for the first couple hours in the morning before I have to head back home on Sunday, before I have to well, get back to normal routine here. So just figure I'd let everybody know about that. If you guys are gonna be at the Tinley Park Show, feel free to say hi to me there, everybody. And let's go ahead and get back onto today's video. A few snakes I wanna share with everybody on you that are not really handleable that well. Um, they can be kept as good pets in a certain way. Uh, they obviously do have a good price range, but they just are more, they're kind of more of the, the display type of animal to have instead of the one you can take out and handle and socialize with it. These animals are better off just being left in their enclosures a majority of the time. The difficult part is, is probably getting them out to clean their enclosures and uh, yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Anyway, jumping right into the first one everybody, Emerald Tree Boas. Emerald Tree Boas are probably one of the, one of the prettiest boa species on the, here that's on in, ca in captivity. These guys can get about around about the six to seven foot range, and these guys can do have a pretty interesting price here. Some of them range from like two hundred to three hundred dollars a piece, and these guys are found in the Amazon regions of South America. The reason they are not really a Hannibal species is because they're pretty antisocial. You see a lot of these animals in pictures seeing them sitting on a tree branch because these guys are an arboreal species. They like to be off the ground a majority of the time. And that's why they call them a tree boa because you literally will find many of them off the ground a lot of times. And these guys obviously in captivity, they are mostly rodent eaters, but in the wild, they'll probably have a variety of stuff from small rodents to small birds as well as probably what they will be eating. And these guys, believe it or not, have been recorded to have the largest teeth of any non-venomous snake in the world. So taking a bite from this species, it will it's definitely not going to be fun if that happens. So these guys, this is, that's one of the few reasons of why they're not a good handling species because these guys do have a bit of a temperament and they're kind of better off to be just left on this as a display animal. I've seen it myself how big their teeth are. They are absolutely enormous. I'll show you guys a photo right here real quick to show you the description of that. Even though they are a beautiful, beautiful species nonetheless, everybody. Like I said, you can afford one and you can definitely can keep them in captivity. There are very, very, very few of them in captivity that are handleable. If I'm not mistaken, I believe Kevin McCurley has one that he has handled before. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but on that one, everybody. But anyway, moving on to number two. So another species, everybody, that really isn't quite as friendly and being handleable, everybody, is also another tree boa species, the Amazon tree boa. Now, this is not to be confused with the emerald tree boa because they are two different species, everyone, and they do exist, believe it or not, also in uh, similar areas in, the, in South America. But just one species is obviously a little bit bigger than the other. Amazon tree boas are obviously a bit smaller and they don't get quite as big. So when it comes to Amazon tree boas, these obviously they are sharing similar characteristics with emerald tree boas. They obviously are an arboreal species. They're really kind of more of a display animal and uh, usually not the kind to be handled with. And they're just, they do have a bit of a nippy attitude with them. And they got, and these guys though, their teeth, obviously non-venomous since they are a type a species of boa. These guys uh, stay a little bit smaller and their teeth are not quite as large as their cousins of the the emerald tree boa, but it's still something you probably don't want to get bit by regardless. Now these guys of these species, they are relatively affordable. You can find them at a local reptile show where I'm going to be heading to here pretty soon. I might actually see quite a few for sale. Some of them can range from like $50 to 150 It depends on like the locality and what morphs are in them because there's been a lot of different localities of Amazon tree boas that have been produced over the last several years and it just is really neat to see how many like localities of them have are going to be produced. Like I said, uh, I don't know too much about the Amazon tree boas because I have never handled one before and 
there's not many of them in captivity that are pretty docile being handled either. <laughs> Maybe I'll give it. A, what is that? A bug? No, oh, no, never mind. I thought I had a bug crawling on my wrist. Amazon tree boas. I do think they are a good pet snake to have, but they're just not really the type of the one you want to take out of its cage and handle it and play with it so much. It's more like just have one on display. Kind of same thing with Amazon tree boas. Um, and kind of similar with green tree pythons, believe it or not. Green tree pythons, they're not a handleable species that much. They're kind of more of a, just an arboreal uh, display animal. Even though green tree pythons are absolutely a beautiful species, I I think they're probably one of my favorites um, in the captivity, to be honest. Even though I've never owned one, I think it'd be really cool if I ever got my hands on one. But anyway, Amazon tree boas. Back to what we were talking about. They don't get quite as large. They get about maybe about four foot long, maybe five feet at max. So they don't get quite as big as emerald tree boas. But the one thing about Amazon tree boas, they have a more slender body, slender body shape than uh, emerald tree boas do. So these guys obviously are, how many times have I said that they're arboreal? At least a couple dozen times, something like that. They are a neat animal to have in captivity, everybody. Of course, just like a lot of boas and pythons in captivity, these, those, these species are rodent eaters. You can feed them frozen pond mice, and you don't have to worry about them switching over to, like, you don't have to worry about feeding them birds or anything like that, because that's just something that we don't usually produce in the reptile community for snake food. The normal one product is mice and rats, is what is really the most healthy thing for them. So if you are considering about getting an Amazon tree boa, everybody, make sure you guys do your research online and lots of books, or even ask a lot of snake seller, snake breeders online or in person, if you're at a reptile show and planning on getting one, and make sure you guys have the right size enclosure for them. And with that, <laughs> I really don't know how much more about Amazon tree boas I can explain to you guys, but let me know if you guys prefer Amazon tree boas or Emerald tree boas for you in your own personal opinion as a pet. A little break from discussion of this video, everybody. We're gonna go ahead and feed my girl Ariel here and see if she wants a juicy mouse. Where are you? I see your head. Come on, girl. I know it's something that you like. Right up here. Come on, I can see you. All right, here she comes. Come on, come on, Ariel, you got this. Hmm, okay. Guess I'll come back to her later here, after I'm done with this video here, so... Sorry to disappoint you guys on that, but now let's go ahead, get back to work. So now down to the last one, everybody. So for the last species that, obviously, a snake you can keep, but it's really a, not a good idea to handle, is venomous snakes in general. That's right, all venomous snakes, whether it's a rattlesnake, a cobra, a pit viper, any of those species right there, you guys, those are not handleable snakes because, because obviously many of them carry very toxic venom with them. Some have cytotoxins, I forgot what the other terms are, hematoxins as well, that was another one. <laughs> wow, I actually named two up there at the top of my head, impressive. That's all I can remember. Regardless though, venomous snakes, don't generally make great pets everybody so that's why they're really you don't see them for sale at reptile shows at all because they're just they're not really a good animal to keep especially when there's little kids that are attending these shows I mean obviously if it's just on display and it's not for sale that's one thing but for sale not really a good idea but if any of you guys own a venomous snake feel free to let me know in the comments below just to share like how long if you guys have had it what experiences you've had with it and like, how do you actually try to properly uh, keep the snake in, in maintenance? So with that, I really got no other species of snakes to share with. So if you guys really enjoyed this video, feel free to smash that like button. And also, if you're new to this channel, feel free to subscribe as well while you're at that. And I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video, everyone. So I shall see you guys at Tinley next weekend. <laughs>